Hey folks, hope you're having a great Friday. Sorry I'm not there with you today. I'm at a uh, coaching clinic down in Madison for track, but I uh, wanted to make you a short video and I'll keep it as short as humanly possible. Um, here in a second, you will need your textbook. So if you want to open up your chapter six in your textbook to page 372, that'd be great. And you also need to have your homework out, your homework packet out. Um, so today being Friday, uh, we're going to be talking a little bit more. We're going to wrap up 6-1 today. This will be the third day we're on 6-1, solving systems by substitution. Uh, just a quick reminder that you do have a formative on Monday. So you need to get these three sheets done, the 6-1, day one, day two, and day three sheets. You need to have those done by Monday at the latest. Um, hopefully, uh, you know, the sub's going to come around today, and she's, he or she's going to check your uh, day two sheet, make sure that that's done, and stamp, that, stamp your... Uh, your calendar, but make sure that you're prepped and ready for that assessment on Monday, that 6-1 assessment. And if you have questions, get yourself down to the MRC either this afternoon or Monday morning before class. All right, homework from last night. This is Thursday's assignment. Make sure you're checking over these answers real quick. You have Ramona. Ramona was selling lemonade and she had expenses and she had income. And it's important for you guys when you write these equations, uh, you know, she, the expenses. She spent a 30 cents a cup on uh, uh, what she's putting in there ingredients wise and it spent six dollars on advertising but then you have to define what x and y are do not write me equations and then not define exactly uh what exactly these these variables represent and then the same goes for her income was a buck fifty a cup it defining that x and that y and then making sure you're drawing a nice clear and, and concise graph all right uh you obviously can see here in the graph that the expenses are growing more slowly than income but the expenses essentially, just like when you start any business, you kind of start out, they call it starting out in the red, where you, you owe more money or you have more expenses than you have income. And then pretty soon they max out. We call that the breaking point right here at five, as you can see on the graph. And we would say, hey, the break even point is at five cups, meaning that Ramona has to sell six or more cups of lemonade to make a profit. Now, if you want to solve that algebraically, you take those two equations that you wrote up above, and we're going to use that substitution substitution to substitute one equation into the other. So y equals 1.5x. That 1.5x will be then substituted in here to replace the y. And you then have an equation with simply just x's. You solve for x and you get five cups, which is exactly what our table said, our, our graph said. And we substitute that five back in here, 1.50 times x, and we get $7.50. So what does that represent? Well, the five is the, that number of cups we have to sell. And then when we have $7.50 worth of income, we're also gonna have $7.50 worth of expenses. So that's essentially that's when our profit is zero, but that's what the value of the in expenses and income would be at that break even point. All right, next problem was about Chen and he was mowing lawns. Uh, he started out buying a lawnmower, so his expenses were 180 bucks and then he makes uh, he also has a $4 gas expense. I did have some students write just y equals 180, and then they, can, and they just put made this 16x. Uh, and that's fine, too. It'll work out the same. It's going to make your graph look a lot different. So if you went that route, please don't feel bad. But I'm going to discuss this option right here. So you have to define, again, what is x, what is y, blah, 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 yada, 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 right? You get your equations written. You graph that bad boy. And hopefully you find a break-even point just over 11, all right? If you're really careful, you, you found that break-even point to be just over 11 uh, lawns, which means that old uh, Chen here is going to have to mow at least 12 lawns in order to make a profit. Algebraically, same deal, Lucille. Again, I put this video on its learning, so if you want to look at this and pause and do all that good stuff later, you're welcome to do that but you've got your substitution where you're putting your 20x in over there. And you solve and you find out that breaking point is exactly 11 and a quarter, 11.25 lawns, and that's $225, meaning that at that point in time, he'd have $225 worth of expenses, but also $225 worth of income. So that would be breaking even. The other problems on the back side: number four and five, you have three negative one when you graph, and six, five. Again, this work, you can check it out. The solutions are also posted on its learning. Number six, seven, eight, nine. Get that so they're up at the top of the screen. I apologize. Number six is three, x equals three. Number seven, x equals negative 11. Number eight is 15 fourths. And number nine is zero. So I didn't show as much work as maybe I should have on these four problems. If you have questions though, you're always welcome to 
ask. I'm sure a sub could help, or if you go to the MRC. Now, I told you you need to be to page 372. Um, at this point in time, we'll be working through this. You can kind of work with your, your table partners there. There'll be times when I ask the substitute here to, to pause, so please do so when I ask. So we're going to read through the problem here. Old Marcus and Philip, they're in a robotics club. They're both saving money to buy materials to build a new robot. Now, if you start looking at the, the most important information here, is that Marcus wants to open a bank account, and he already he's going to deposit $25, all right, that he won in a competition, and then his plan is to deposit $10 each week after that. Now, Philip, on the other hand, wants to, he already has $40, and then his, his plan is to also save $10 per week. So Marcus and Philip, what's cu curious is they're depositing v different amounts of money, but then they both plan to save $10 a week. And that's the whole point of this problem is, what happens when your rate of change is equivalent for both uh, of your different scenarios? So now it says write a function to represent the information regarding Marcus and Philip. Um, so for Marcus, and I'm going to get you a little bit of a push start here since these are the notes. For Marcus, we have the equation y equals, he already has $25 and he's going to save 10 per week. So it'd be 25 plus 10x or 10x plus 25. It doesn't matter to me what order you write it in. And then for Philip, He's going to save, he's already saved up $40, and he also plans on saving $10 per week. Now, we do need to define what X and Y are. In this case, X is the number of weeks, I'll abbreviate here, and Y is the total savings. All right, so you need to have these things labeled. I'm telling you that, I'm trying to set the good example by doing so. So you have two equations. Now, it's going to ask you a, a number of questions here in a row. So I'm going to leave, I'd ask that you pause, and then I want you to try to do uh, number three here, and then turn the page, and I want you to keep on trucking. Now, number four is going to say rewrite each function as an equation, which we already did. So for number four, you've already done that. You can skip number four. But then I want you to keep on trucking and keep on going down this page 373, all right? And when you guys get to the bottom of page 373, I want you to turn the video back on so we can go over it together. All right. All right. Now, I'm hopefully you're at the bottom of page three. You've got 373 done. So let's talk about what you, some of your responses here. And I'm not going to write everything out. I think this is something that you guys, you've done your writing. Hopefully, you can check and see what you've got written. But number three said, predict what Marcus and Philip will have. I'm sorry, when they'll have the same amount of money saved. Now, I'm hoping that you guys see that if uh, Marcus and Philip start out with different amounts and then they save the exact amount each week, they are never going to be the same. I'm hoping that you said that somewhere. They're never going to be the same. Then down here at number five said, analyzing these equations. Okay, so describing the slope of each line represent, represented uh, in this situation, right? Describe what the slope of each line represents. So in this case, I'm going to rewrite our equations up here. For Marcus, we had 25 plus 10x. Sorry if that's not, that's in blue. And y equals 40 plus 10x for Philip. All right, so you have these two equations. Now describe what the slope of each line. What was our slope again? It was that 10. It was the amount saved per week, right? That $10 that we were saving. So I'm hoping that you indicated something along those lines. Again, it was that $10 per week. All right, how do the slopes compare? Well, I'm hoping you said they're the exact same thing. You know, describe this means in terms of this problem situation. That means that these guys are saving the exact same amount each week. If, if, if Marcus adds $10, so is Philip. So it's the same every week. On down to C. Describe what the y-intercept of each line represents in the problem situation. The y-intercept for Marcus, his y-intercept is 25. That's his $25 starting amount, right? 
But for Philip, that y-intercept is his $40 starting, sorry I've run out of uh, room here, but it's hard to write small on a smart board. All right, so Marcus and Philip, that y-intercept. Now how do the y-intercepts compare? Obviously Philip has got a $15 head start. So I'm hoping you said something about Philip. He got out of the gates a little bit more quickly than Marcus did. Now number six, determine the solutions of this linear system of linear equations, both algebraically and graphically. So it says use substitution method to, decide, to determine the intersection point. Now this right here is the most important part of today. When we have a system, so let's write our two equations, y equals 25 plus 10x. And the other equation in the system is y equals 40 plus 10x. If we use substitution and we replace the y in the other equation with that 40 plus 10x, so I rewrite this as 40 plus 10x equals, and if you've been asleep, wakey wakey for this part because this is the most important portion of today's lesson. What happens when we solve this system when we have identical slope or the identical coefficient to x? When we solve a system now, I'm, all I'm doing is subtracting 10x from both sides, which is what you would do when you want to move those x's to the same side. But what you'll notice, the problem here is they cancel both x's. All the x's have canceled out of this equation, and we end up with 40 equals 25. And there's not a person in this room that thinks 40 equates to 25. So what does this indicate? What were we trying to find? We were trying to find a break-even point when Marcus and Philip have the exact same amount of savings. And we already knew that was never going to happen. And this is how it looks algebraically. So does your solution make sense? Kind of does. It, I mean, 40 does never, is never going to equal 25. But it does make sense that they're telling us that there is no solution possible. All right? There is no solution possible. There's never going to be a week when Marcus and Philip have the same amount. All right? Never going to happen. Now, the next page asks us to graph this. Now, I don't think it's a big secret that when we graph this, they're never going to cross. Right? Now, what do we predict it's going to look like? Well, what kind of lines never cross? You'll get a hint right here. The old parallel lines. So let's graph these two equations. If you want to pause for a second while you graph, that would be peachy. I'd really appreciate that. But by the time you get done graphing, you're going to find that that $40 a week, I'm sorry, that $40 starting value and $10 a week looks kind of like this. And when we graph that line, it's going to go up like so. That would be Philip. And then Marcus started at $25 a week, and his $10 a week bump gives us this graph which again, all right, I didn't draw them perfectly, but you get the idea that these are parallel lines. They're both going up, uh, sorry, up $10 every day, up 10 over one, up 10 over one, up 10 over one. They, have, they both have the same exact slope. And since they have that exact same slope, they are never gonna cross. What's the point? The point is this, folks, today's lesson you're going to have situations where you have systems without any possible solutions. We're going to say no solutions. How do you know that's going to happen? Well, you're going to find out algebraically. And it, what's going to happen is anytime you have a system where your variables cancel out completely and what you're left with is false. If what you're left with is false, you have no solutions. 40 is not equal to 25. If you ever have the variables cancel out and you're left with something that is true, like 40 equals 40, or if you had 25 equals 25, then what you have are two lines that are going to graph right on top of one another. Literally the exact same line. And if you have that happen, so if they ever cancel out and you had the exact same thing here, 25 equals 25 or 40 equals 40, then instead of no solutions, you would write infinite solutions. So if you end up with a situation like that, you can even make the infinity symbol if you want and say infinite solutions. So on today's assignment, you may have a situation where that happens. Please be prepared for it. 
If you have questions, I promise that this level of challenge is not on that formative on Monday. Primarily, we want to know, do you, do you simply know how to use the substitution method on some of the more basic questions? So this kind of a knowledge is what's important, just being able to do this, not so much the non, no solution, infinite solutions. This is kind of like icing on the cake, definitely not something we're going to put on that formative on Monday. Hey, folks, have a good weekend. Be safe. Make good choices. Miss you guys. I'll see you on Monday.